Mm. Begin countdown sequence. Thirty seconds. I have, I have had nightmares about this day not happening. So to be here is a huge, huge relief. And um, this is how I know my goons love me. I was saying, you know, I've drank very little water the whole day. I'm really dehydrated. And they said, hey, no problem. Got you covered with the corona. So uh, good. It's nice to be looked out for. Hey, uh, welcome to the closing ceremonies for DEF CON 32. Show of hands, who has never been to a closing ceremonies? Oh, you're in for a treat. Make sure you have a pee cup because this thing goes long. <laughs> so let's get this going. Um, so the closing ceremonies, um, we kind of always start on a serious note and then we go in for the lulls. And the serious note is we really need to acknowledge the contributions of those who came before us. Um, I think we are all standing on the shoulders of giants and we all don't live forever. And so people in our community I think are really big about giving back and, uh, and contributing to others. So what I want to do is just have a moment of silence. I don't care who you think about or what you do, but just reflect about those people that helped you get to where you are now and, uh, and you know, so they live on in your memory. So we're just going to take a moment here. All right, now we're going to think about all the cool shit we've done. <laughs> So the theme for this year was engage, um, and it, it could mean many things to many people. Um, but for us at DEF CON, it really forced us to try to move forward some thoughts that we've had for a long time. And so this year we launched two projects to try to engage the community in different ways. We don't know if it's going to work. We don't know if it's going to fail spectacularly. But sometimes failing is its own way of learning. So the first thing we're trying is the DEF CON Franklin initiative and the idea here is to decide or learn is there a way to create sort of on-ramps for those of us who want to try to help protect uh, critical infrastructure, protect water systems and we're trying to create a sort of Rolodex matchmaking system between those who want to help and those who need help. And we'll start with water systems and if we get some good lessons learned we're going to maybe try it with education with school systems. And if it doesn't work, we're going to write that up. And if it works, we're going to write that up and hope people duplicate it. And the second initiative is the DEF CON Academy done by the Pone College crew, Shellfish. And the idea here is how do we really help accelerate your learning? So instead of getting to a certain skill level in seven years, maybe you can get there in five or four years. And it's going to take a lot of the lessons learned from Pone College and other things. Um, and so this year we're going to rough it out in beta and by next year we're going to have the full launch and so if you see announcements throughout the year as we're testing things out, you know, please help out. So those are two of our ways of trying to get the community involved and trying to advance your skill level. Finally, also for Engage, the DEF CON social Mastodon server continues to run. Um, it's really fascinating to see the fragmentation in social media and it seems like across all platforms, there's reduced activity. 
I don't know if it's people are just burned on social or it's too much different uh, ways in which we can uh, engage with each other. But it's, um, I think we're kind of into this post COVID long haul. And it's nice to have a little uh, safe harbor. We moderate uh, DEF CON social with our code of conduct. So if you kind of like the way that we try to enforce things here, we try to do the same online. So finally, the profit. If you're in the room, We've created our Uber Contributor Award. This is the third year we've done it. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to hold out, as an example to the community, people we respect, people with years or decades of contributing to the community selflessly. Um, I first met the Prophet, I don't know, 30 something years ago in the DEF CON Voice Bridge, I believe. And so we've created these awards. And uh, I think we have what's written on it, right? There's only so many characters we can have imprinted on these things, right? I met him when he was a freaker. He's a longtime writer for 2600 Magazine. He's an educator. He's a DJ. And he really empowered, uh, and also Telefreak Challenge, Queer Con, you know, it just goes on and on, his contributions over the decades. So if you're here, Prophet, I think we somehow tried to trick you into coming here without telling you what was about? Where is he? Get the fuck up here, man. Come on down. Thank you so much. You want to say something? Say something. Say something. Uh, hi. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, this is my. 32nd DEF CON, uh, and I love this place, this community. This is a magical community, and anything you can dream can happen, because I've dreamed a lot of things and then they've happened here. Uh, I really uh, hope that we can continue doing this uh, incredible thing. Thanks so much. Thank you. Also, I think Prophet might have been the first person to actually get his award. Because <laughs> last time we had Kingpin was gone, uh, Richard Thiem was gone. Wynn picked his Oh, Wynn Schwartow. Wynn was the first to pick his up, yeah. He didn't see it coming either. It was great. Okay, so this next one is something we've never done before, which is for an organization instead of an individual. You can guess who that might be. The Electronic Frontier Foundation. Thank you all so much. What an amazing conference. And we're so honored to have been a part of DEF CON for over 20 years now, I think we've been coming. Um, Oh, yes, hold it outwards. Thank you all so much for all of your support. This year we've raised $130,000, helped speakers stay on stage, and we're so honored to be a part of this community. And we think that security research makes the world better for everyone. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit. Mar, come on down. We're going to talk a little bit about what we've been wearing around our neck. The DEF CON badge. Come on. You can use this or the microphone. Hi. Hi, so uh, it's amazing seeing you all wearing the badge and uh, all the lights glowing and the SAOs and it's super cool. Um, okay, so I want to thank Team Catball. Um, I did the concept design and coordination of the badge effort. Uh, Bonnie Finley, 3D Modeling, Game Art and Dev. Chris Maltby did plugins and game development. He also created um, GB Studio, um, which is what we use to develop the game. Um, Nutmeg Ann on game development. Will Tuttle, concept and narrative collab. 
Ada RW, my kiddo over there, actually made one of the characters on your badge. It's a little dragon if you wanted to play that one. Um, <laughs> Huge thanks to Raspberry Pi for the hardware, um, Entropic, Entropic with Dimitri, GR for hardware development, firmware, and emulator, Joe Grand um, for hardware support and production testing, Legion 303 uh, music and sounds, which don't work on your game, but uh, they do work on the badge hardware itself, uh, and ICSN for manufacturing. Um, Uh, I really wanted to do something that was accessible um, uh, because when I got into the scene, I was not a hard, I'm not a hardware engineer myself, uh, and so I wanted something that was really accessible that anybody could play with. So I reached out to Raspberry Pi. Um, so there's many layers on this badge um, that you can get involved with, um, down to just like you could load up your own ROMs to play, um, you could create your own game, you could get as far as messing with the uh, Raspberry Pi 2350 SDK. Um, the badge itself uh, is pretty interactive. Um, there's a game on the badge, there's a little story if you play through it, um, and it's really just a lot about um, if you work in you know, uh, the DEF CON scene and create your own projects, it's kind of just take care of yourself too, you know? Um, infrared. Infrared, yeah, uh, and then uh, interacting with each other, um, you can go up to other people and uh, there's IR here, and uh, you can use that within the game. Um, it's a little buggy, but you know, what isn't for a DEF CON project, it's fine. <laughs> um, okay, we, we loaded up the conference map in here, um, so you could actually get around the conference using your badge. And uh, then if you get using the real-time clock, if you set your time at the beginning, um, you'd be able to go into each one of the talks and it would tell you who is speaking at that point in time, which is pretty cool. Um, I really wanted people to be able to express themselves wearing the badge. Uh, so there's full SAO support. Um, you can change LED color, um, which you've seen, I'm sure, on everybody else around you, which is great. Um, and then this, um, the orientation was important for me so that you're like playing in game mode here. And then you can also be wearing it and after a certain period of time, it'll time out and then it shows your little character that you've chosen and how far you've progressed in the game so you kind of can get a feel for where everybody else is around you. Um, and then reusability is so important, which is why it's, it's a Raspberry Pi, so you can do all kinds of things with this, like as, whatever you can imagine. <laughs> so please reuse it, post your projects later. Um, and I just kind of touched on some of the hardware, but um, we're, it's an ABS injection molded case, which I experimented with last year um, with the plastics, and we like really got it right this year. Um, the RP2350, which is a brand new chip, um, that was just released this weekend to DEF CON attendees. Y'all got the very first one. Um, and you can find out more about that chip um, on their website, on Raspberry Pi's website. Um, <clears throat> orientation sensor, real-time clock, we talked about with the badge talks. Um, customizable RGB LEDs, IR communication. Um, there's a micro SD card in here um, that if you pop it out and put it in your computer, there's also um, some goodies on there, like the official DEF CON soundtrack. Um, and then you can go get more, load up more stuff with your SD card. Um, USB-C, and then it's uh, rechargeable, you my own battery. Um, audio does work on here. Just because it doesn't work in the game in time, um, you can still play audio from your badge, which is pretty neat. Um, there is a touch screen, which we didn't utilize in the game, but you can do stuff with if you do a Raspberry Pi project with it afterwards. Um, and then UGB is the emulator for playing the games, um, and it'll play any uh, Game Boy compatible games, so um, also Game Boy Color, you know, all that stuff. Um, so Raspberry Pi has also um, put out a challenge, um, and I put the URL here, um, so y'all can check that out, um, and they're offering a reward. Okay, whoops. Nope. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Let y'all come up. Thank you. Okay, as you saw the sneak peek, our next slide is on transparency. And transparency is the flip side of the code of conduct coin. Um, uh, so I've, I've mentioned this before, but I'll, I think it's important, so I'll say it again, that when we created a code of conduct for ourselves and started getting practiced and handling them, 
the next thing we needed to do is hey, we need to report on what we're getting to try to hold ourselves accountable. And so over the years, as we've gotten different kinds of complaints or concerns, we've recorded them slightly differently. So this year, we put a bunch of energy in to try to standardize all of our terms and terminology so year after year we can actually get a better idea of trends. Because as we were trying to do trend analysis, we realized we weren't very consistent in, in between categories. So this is the first year of our new standard. And to talk about it, head of the SOC, Cyber Junkie, and head of the hotline, Ada. So this is Ada's first time up here. Many of you have seen stats that have come out of Get closer hotline. To the, closer to the microphone. <laughs> Many of you have already seen the stats that have come out hotline over the last couple of years. Ada is the person who's responsible, so this is the first time she's here to actually talk about what's going on and give some better color to it. Um, we've also juggled how things are presented, so you'll see more aggregated stuff under SOC and helpline specific things under helpline. Um, so, uh, starting with SOC, uh, we had to remove two people from staff. Um, one of those people uh, was um, removed for uh, harassment type behavior, uh, and one was removed for uh, uh, unwanted touching against one of our own staff. Um, we take that stuff very seriously. We hold all of our staff accountable, and we hold them to a high standard. Um, we kicked two attendees from COM, when we kick an attendee from con, it's not a ban, it's just a, we'd like you to go away, come back next year, but we think you need to take a time out. Three people were banned from cons, however, and all three were banned for um, sexual harassment type behavior. Um, we consider them to be people we do not want in our community, therefore we don't want them coming here, causing further problems, so we remove them permanently. Uh, we had seven code of conduct complaints, one verbal assault complaint, three complaints for photo violation policies. We had 11 medical issues. Um, and I'd like to actually say that these were really mild medical issues. Um, we had, I think, two ambulances roll, but nobody left in them. Almost all of them were people who were partying a little bit too hard. A couple of people who were um, maybe not taking care of themselves as, as well as they should. Uh, the, the they facility, needed to drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> the facility was fantastic. This is the first time we've had an on-site nurse assisting us, as well as the, all of the trained medical professionals that the facility provides. And so... And so in the vast majority of these cases, we had really swift response and good outcomes as a result. But also because there was a medical facility and a medical nurse's office here, many of you were able to take care of minor issues yourselves, which meant you didn't have to leave the conference for a Band-Aid or something. And I think that's a really great improvement to the experience as well. Um, three lost property reports. We had five complaints of uh, uh, replica money being circulated. We have actually now found the individual was responsible. It was a prank, but it's obviously not going to happen again, hopefully. Um, uh, two reports of unwanted touching of property. Uh, please leave other people's stuff alone. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. One report of disruptive behavior. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two reports of staff impersonation, and I should add that one of them is now a member of staff. Um, <laughs> he made a fake badge, a fake goon badge, which we generally discourage, uh, but he was super ethical about what he did, and he managed to socially engineer his way all the way into the sock where I got to meet him face to face. <laughs> and so promptly we hired him on the spot. <laughs> um, four reports of unsecured doors 
and uh, a, a growing issue. We had um, we were now up to ten reports of theft. Um, obviously, we're in a new venue, um, bigger venue, lots more people around. Please keep an eye on your stuff. Don't leave laptops lying around. Be mindful, as you would like at any conference. Um, Ada, step in, and I'll say some last things at the end. I'm not this tall, sorry. Uh, so Hotline is a little different. You guys uh, really used the number this year uh, more than ever before, uh, which we very much appreciate, but probably I need a few more people to help out next year. Uh, we get a lot of information calls, especially before DEF CON. Uh, people just asking, can I get badges usually? That's like the number one question. Can I get a badge? Where can I get a badge? How can I get a badge? Um, so we get a lot of texts, a lot of calls that way. Um, we got four reports of sexual assault. Now, not all of these rep reports will end up in bans. Um, part of that is because maybe the victim doesn't know too much about the other person, so we can't find them, or they don't want to necessarily do anything about it. They just need emotional support, and so we give that. Uh, three reports of restraining orders, which we have somewhat enforced as much best as we can. We're not the police, so we do our best. Um, 11 people calling in just for paraprofessional counseling. That's, I'm having a panic attack. Can you help me? Um, I'm depressed about something that happened. Can you talk to me? Anything like that. Uh, it's in line with um, suicide hotline training kind of stuff, uh, which is where I came from. Um, and then six counts of crisis counseling. So if somebody calls in and something needs to be done right now, um, my friend's in trouble, something's been stolen, that kind of stuff, somebody's calling in in a panic. Uh, one scam that called us to try a scam us out of money, which we're hotline, good luck, we have no money. Uh, three accessibility concerns, usually with the shuttles, but sometimes there's other issues like a door doesn't work properly or something. Um, before con, when we like released the phone number and before anyone else had the number, only me, so I could was the only person who could respond to your calls. I did my best. Uh, you guys called a lot. Uh, I can't answer all those calls myself. I'm sorry. Um, and one human, once again, stuck in back of house who needed to be released into the wild. So the last thing to say is it's the most important thing to everyone on staff that people feel safe and that you have a safe environment to enjoy your conference and that you are safe where you stay. And we're aware of reports of room searches and some of the things that I'm sure you've read on social media. Um, we want to say that Please be cooperative when these things happen, document them, and please come forward and tell us. The more we know, the more we can do, and we are going to be issuing a report, uh, a statement after this conference, once everyone has checked out. <laughs>
the hacker community there and help make our critical water system safer. Thanks, guys. Okay, next up is policy at DEF CON. This is our effort to try to connect hackers with policymakers. Come on up. Hey, folks. Uh, so I'm Katie Noble, uh, otherwise known as Lady Inn, and I am the deputy of policy at DEF CON. Uh, so this is our third year, and we really want to uh, thank everyone who helped, especially our attaches and our goons. And if you're wondering what is policy at DEF CON, um, so we've been going for three years and our whole goal is to bring policymakers and hackers and security practitioners together so that we can have informed, uh, informed conversations about public policy so we can make public policy better. And when I say public policy, I mean things like laws, standards, regulations. Uh, we were really honored this year to have an, off an awesome a uh, group of uh, speakers show up. So we had 10 talks in the policy uh, section. We had six talks on the creator stage. We had over 1,500 people in our small little room. Uh, got some great social media presence and uh, we're really looking forward to doing it again next year. Okay, so if you used our Discord server, you indirectly were interacting with the next team, the DevOps team, led by Riverside. Hey everyone, my voice is almost gone. Fox is going to take care of this one. <laughs> Hi everybody, I am Fox, if you don't know me. I am the second for DevOps. Um, behind me on the slides, you can see our wonderful team. They work all year round to keep the DEF CON Discord safe, and when they're bored, they go ahead and make integrations that make life at DEF CON better. Um, let's see, next slide. You can see some of the stats behind me for all of our Discord, um, all the coding, the bots. This year we've added a couple more full bots. We've added uh, 1481 lines of code. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, you want me to jump in? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll jump in and help a little bit. So the the total lines of production code right now is almost twenty thousand lines of code, and every year Discord changes their APIs. They're constantly a moving target. So this team, on a weekly basis, is doing something, no matter what. And so it is a, a continual trickle of nonstop DefCon. And they're working really, really hard for, for all of you. There's a ton of channels, thousands and thousands of messages, people connecting from all around the world. And so the folks that couldn't make it are here in spirit and connecting and doing really cool things. Um, we had a, a few people warned and a bunch of bands, and they're doing a great job with that. This year, some of our big wins with the extra integrations. Um, last year, we had the data duplication village, and it was kind of a sad state where we had people writing down codes and they had to bring the codes back. So this year we upgraded that to the scanning system, which is much quicker. And in the meantime, we also upgraded the Infobot, um, integrated that with the hacker tracker. It was kind of last minute, in fact. And so you see on the slide that every minute counts and we were coding all throughout Con this year. <laughs> and, and wait, don't switch yet. So, so the, the team, does Discord from everywhere and anywhere, and some of the the team members uh, get called in because the team is close to the mic. Yeah, team team is made of a hodgepodge of uh, of goons from all the different departments that we kind of pushed together to make this happen. And so when their their original home teams are like, "Hey, we're short on staff," they get put into other things and wander halls and do things. So they're, they're triple hatting the, the things, but uh, there, there may be some weird spots that we've discorded at emergency points, so. <laughs> all I gotta say is it's a wonderful team. They make my life easy. Keep in mind they work all year round. And um, the final slide is just a data point slide that if you download after closing, you can see some of the demographics of our Discord. Thank you.
All right, next up, if you've used the network at all, you've interacted with the NOC. Come on down. Come on up. You've got a ton of slides. Sorry, I'll go through them quickly. Hey, I'm Mac. I'm uh, number two in the NOC, uh, and we're going to go through this really quickly. Uh, so just kind of a reminder what we do. We provide the wireless. We provide a lot of uh, wired connections. Uh, as well as support uh, any things from the floor, people running contest servers, et cetera. Um, this year is a little bit different. I mean, we had stuff kind of lined up with Caesars from the standpoint of being able to like have some gear left permanent in place that uh, wasn't so permanent as we thought it'd be. So we ended up with only about four weeks to put all of this in here. Um, so that being said, this was one of our fastest opening for the uh, Wi-Fi reg servers, the uh, floor drops, etc. Um, so that was pretty good. Um, you see this every year. We come in early, you know, a week early on site, including all, you know, not including all the planning the weeks ahead of time. Um, and we work with the on on site facilities to get everything up and running. Ideally, you know, by Wednesday, people come in. A lot of last minute scrambling. Um, and then hopefully no emergencies, like having to do an emergency network brain surgery. Um, and then we have to have it all packed up by 10 p.m. tonight. Uh, so it's a lot, and it takes a, a big team to get it done. Um, here are some of the stats from this year. Um, I'm going to breeze through these if that's okay for time. Uh, if you have any questions, you'll, there'll, be some, uh, there'll be a pointer at the end. Uh, but that being said, I do want to say thank you for using the network. Um, using it to its fullest potential. Uh, we were pretty much capped the whole time, and I'll be honest about, uh, sorry, quick math, um, about 60% uh, of that was from the secured Wi-Fi, and about 20% of that was from the insecure Wi-Fi. Um, we had at least uh, 2,500 people online all at the same, sorry, devices online at the same time because people around here tend to only have one device on them, right? Um, and again, the majority is still working on secure, uh, so it is, is a good place to go. Uh, witty repartee, um, again, you really use the network to its fullest potential, um, and that really caused a lot of uh, getting out of the gate, starting and uh, hitting the brakes. Um, so thank you for that, but also something we got to work on. So sorry about that. Um, and I really kind of want to put a shout out personally to a lot of the Cox communication folks, especially their wireless team. Um, we are relying on them. You noticed on the previous slide, there's you know 650 access points in this room. That's a lot of money to be putting into equipment, which is only used like once or twice a year. So we're really kind of starting to leverage the facilities here for some of the things that are much, much higher ticket item and, and harder to use. Uh, but they were awesome to work with and, and you know, pretty much worked with everything that we, could, we wanted from them. Bandwidth. Jeff, we need more bandwidth neck here. <laughs> tell him, don't tell me. Uh, we have a bunch of stats with regards to what we saw from attacks and random things around there. Um, you know, almost a thousand different SSIDs advertised from various people. Um, not, and not a lot of those were actual mobile hotspots. They tended to be uh, other items, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and so, again, these stats and some more detailed ones will be going up to knock in a minute. Um, I really want to put some you know, call out to the team, to everybody there. Big round of appreciation and I, uh, I got to do one thing. As I said, I'm the number two. Um, our leader, new management, Canadian, unfortunately couldn't be here for the closing ceremonies. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why in a sec. Uh, this is from Sparky. He's our, uh, he's our leader. Uh, after what can only be described as the most chaotic year I've had at DEF CON with short prep time and equipment issues and a totally new space, um, the DEF CON NOC team completed their work and not only did they complete it, they did it faster and more efficient than we ever have. 
These people are simply the best of the best. The teamwork, the helping hands, the consistent team spirit in the face of staggering pressure and odds has been outstanding. The operations group, special call out to Jeff and team, uh, should also be commended for what could be arguably one of the best DEF CON changes ever. Thank you so much. Um, there, you can applaud. Uh, again, to the Cox Communications team, thank you guys for being there. Your dedication to getting it done is not only critical to our success, but also building new relationships with ground crews is hard, and we appreciate your team rocking so much. Um, unfortunately, this is where the penny drops. I've come down with a pretty kick-ass round of COVID. Thought it was just con crud, but unfortunately, it is the holy sea. Uh, after 25 years of being in the knock, I'm the lead role, and this is where you see the Canadian self-deprecating humor in here. <laughs> Sorry, editorial note. Um, I had an amazing speech ready, you know, singing the praises of my team and friends, and just at the finish line took a stumble. And I just want to say, and I think this stands for all of the goons up here, every one of us is a part of a team. And when someone stumbles, we're all there to pick you up. And that is one of the things that just makes this community awesome. Uh, so here's to next year. We open the knock to the community where we're going to open the knock to the community we love so much, showing you more that we can. Um, and here's to a year where we could work together to build a community that people are proud to be a part of, because I know I am. Love, Sparky. So, oh, sorry, that's the knock team. Uh, knock.defcon.org, it's a little outdated, but we're gonna be updating that. So additional stats, additional information will be appearing there over the next couple weeks. And uh, thank you for using the network. We're having a little speed surgery up here. It's like a Formula One race team. One laptop's down, next laptop's in. Click, click, click. How many clicks do we have? Four clicks. <laughs> click. <laughs> I know, no pressure, no pressure. Okay, one more click. <laughs> All right. Yeah, can I will have a Thin Mint after I introduce the uh, <laughs> DC TV crew. Come on up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hi, folks. How's it going? <laughs> Who here watched talks from someplace not in this room? Who watched them on the internet? All right. Well, we're, we are DC TV. We stream talks to the internet right now. Uh, if you go to dctv.defcon.org, it lists all of our information. Um, new this year, we actually did talks or streams to YouTube. In the past, we've just done Twitch and to the hotels. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but we didn't have any, uh, we didn't have anything in the hotels this year. Uh, we didn't have enough time, unfortunately, to coordinate that, but hopefully next year we'll figure that out when we have a little bit more time. Uh, one of the things that was interesting, uh, we saw lots of streams. Um, I think Twitch was 71,000 uh, live viewers, which is pretty amazing. Uh, YouTube was 73,000. These are crazy numbers, right? But I guess that means everybody loves the content and everybody's watching. Uh, fun facts. Our team consumed 42 burritos this week. <laughs> and 36 tacos. I uh, want to give a shout out to the DCTV family. All these people are very important in making this happen. Uh, Squeak, who's the, the second here, is up on stage as well. Uh, Bull or and, Eagle One, Ghost Pepter, uh, K Sharp, Robin's BS and Sandwich. Uh, also special shout outs to The Knock. 
right? Without the knock, we wouldn't have internet. We wouldn't be able to stream to everybody. Yes. A uh, special shout out to Peter and Alex and Michael who bring all of the cameras and all the camera gear. They're the people who record the talks. And if you want, you can buy them afterwards too. It's pretty slick. And uh, Darrington from Defcon Social who helped us get all the YouTube stuff and all that coordinated. All right, thank you so much, appreciate it. Well, this is great. The new laptop doesn't show me the next slide. Okay, what do we, let's roll the dice. Who, who what do we think the next slide's gonna be? Like a Exhibitors. Okay. <laughs> is uh, anyone here to talk about? Okay, here he comes. You're supposed to stay close. <laughs> Woo! Hello, DEF CON. I already forgot what I was going to say. So myself and KevOps, the official KevOps department, work year-round to engage with organizations that embody the spirit of DEF CON, who truly give back to the DEF CON community. This year's exhibitors provided amazing content uh, with great swag to our attendees. In keeping with DEF CON's transparency, 72% of the net proceeds that was generated this year from exhibitors was converted to hotel accommodations for our world famous content creators. Yeah, give it up. 21% went to charitable organizations that directly support the EFF, or I'm sorry, DEF CON communities like the EFF. 7% uh, supported official DEF CON parties. NFO group is up. Thanks, everyone. It does show, right? It does show, it's in the top right. Can you see it's that little teeny? Oh, you just want a larger one? Okay. What happened? Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. Great. Hello, everyone. Who came out to visit one of the info nodes and asked us a question? How many of you got right answers? <laughs> We don't always get it right, but that's just, the, that's just how Khan is. So I just want to take the time to thank my second little Rue. Without her support, eh, I couldn't do what I do. So I want to thank her first, and then all of my info goons, they're scattered about because, you know, there's over 50 of us now. And now I want to thank DT, Nikita, all of our HQ folks that help support us because, you know, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So I really appreciate all the... I'll get there. Okay. Give me a minute. <laughs> so without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So I, I just want to say thank you to you guys. appreciate you very much. And then the other team that really supports Info is the Hacker Tracker folks. You know, you guys run our website, you guys create the great app, and I just want to thank you guys for everything you do for us to, to help support us. Get the right information out to you guys. And then finally, I want to thank all of you humans for coming to talk to us and for taking all of last year's badges off our tables because we had just had boxes and boxes. So with that, thank you very much. See you guys next year. All right, speakers. Yeah. Hello, DEF CON. Uh, I'm Pasties. I'm number two for speaker operations. Uh, we're responsible for uh, tracks one through four and war stories. So if you saw any uh, talks in there, uh, our team was the one that was 
uh, getting people uh, out and about uh, and like talking to each other, engaging with some uh, of the active content creators. But the, the, we had another stage, which was managed by a separate team. It was the content creator stage. Uh, they talked to us, but they ran in, almost entirely on their own. They just uh, asked us a couple few questions ahead of time, and then they were off to the races, and they rocked it. Uh, who saw content creator talks? Yeah. Who saw main stage talks? Yeah. All right. Uh, it's always nice. Um, I was like, I know that the people like to uh, say, like, we'll watch the, the talks uh, after the con is over. Um, but it, there is something about attending in person. Uh, we do do some QVR metrics uh, just to see how people are engaging with, with our, our talks, see if there's anything that we can improve. Um, new venues are always a particularly hard challenge. Yeah, you're working with new people, new spaces. You don't know what's going to be involved in there. Um, our AV people were fantastic. They were incredibly fast. They were doing some uh, insane switchovers of the stages, mostly in here. So if you were in here for any of the fire stock uh, changes, we were alternating between uh, like the setup that you see here uh, and having a sort of a lounge display. And we did it in another track, which caught us all off guard because uh, uh, just that's how it works. Uh, but they, they were hustling. Uh, I want to set a big, big thanks out to them. Um, we do some uh, impromptu collection of data as people are leaving to sort of see how they felt about the talks. Um, it's a scale of one to five and 63%, I think it was 65%, sorry, were uh, called out as being great, which is what we leave, uh, this is uh, five out of five. Um, uh, this is uh, fantastic. Uh, we also only had uh, eight minutes of downtime after our first morning. There was a little bit more on our first morning and we weren't collecting our metrics, so those were not included and you might have seen some spiciness around there. Um, and uh, we had uh, one talk, uh, cease and desists are not, unusual unfortunately we get there's usually you know one or two oh, that kicks around this one sort of came in last minute uh, and the EFF uh, they graciously decided to uh, help that creator uh, uh, so a round of applause for the EFF So they were able to help that uh, speaker uh, reschedule their talk for Sunday. They were able to do the talk, uh, and we were able to move forward. So uh, if you do want to talk at DEF CON, um, DEF CON does have your back as long as it's very reasonable. Uh, we'll try and uh, help and make sure that uh, your content gets presented, because we want to share with you guys. Um, so thank you, DEF CON. Uh, we'll see you next year. All right, so getting you all badged up is a feat. Getting everybody who's not a human badged up is also a feat. And that is handled by the in-human registration department. Hello, I'm the second for in-human, Esteban Restebang, and this is Aster, the lead. Uh, this year we badged over 1,600 um, inhumans. Uh, it's a lot, probably a little bit more than that. Um, those are all the people who go and make this incredible event what it is, and it's super awesome to see them come through, check in, grab their stuff, and take off to go do wonderful things. Um, we, had, we also take care of black badges, so the people who come back um, for after winning an event, and we had about 87 of those people show up this year and 15 retirees show up. Uh, retirees are weird ones because there's a lot of people who retire but don't actually retire. They keep working, so. Speaking of which, Esteban is retiring this year after 16 years as a goon and eight years doing this. Thank you. Yeah. And so if next year is just utter chaos, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And we badged 580 goons this year, so it's a lot of goons. Um, yeah, it's changed a lot since DEF CON 9, which was my first. Uh, Inhuman didn't really exist as a department, and it's grown immensely in the last eight years since uh, you, we mortalists uh, took it over, right? It created it, really. Created it, yeah. So uh, thank you to our goons, uh, Danny, Charms, McMahem, Decca, and Louise as well. So thanks, everybody. All right, show of hands, how many people attended a workshop? 
How many wish they could have attended a workshop? <laughs> yeah, we're trying. Okay, let's bring up the workshop team. Okay, thank you. Woo. Hey, everyone. Thank you guys all. This is so much fun. I love this. So workshops is, if you're not aware, it's there are four hour, this year there were four hour sessions. We had over 29, or we had 29 bespoke sessions. That was, thanks to my second for that beautiful word. Um, of those 29 sessions, we covered so many different topics. There's a little bit of a blend of both blue and red team stuff. Lots of hacking going on and a lot of defending too. Um, some of the best points that we had we had our four-hour sessions, our tickets, when they go online, on, those go up usually like first week of July, right after the 4th of July weekend here in the United States, sold out within three minutes. And when I say sold out, these are free sessions. Our instructors come in, they do this out of the goodness of their hearts, we put these on and just have a blast doing it, supporting them in any way we can, and supporting the community as well. So three minutes after tickets go on sale. One of the best things that we've got is a, the forums thread that we start up every year where you could swap tickets if you happen to get one and you end up not being able to use it. So keep an eye on forums to see those swaps happening if you're looking to get into one of the workshops. Seating is really limited. This year we were over at the Spring Hill Suites where we had a great time. Smaller environment, had some challenges. <laughs> Air conditioning didn't necessarily work too well and may have gotten a little overwhelmed and caused the leak and the ceiling to fall and things like that, you know, just typical. Um, over there, we had some amazing help from the folks, the boots on the ground at the hotel. Um, super responsive. They gave us free coffee, you guys. They gave us free coffee. It was great. <laughs> Um, in addition to the delightful coffee, we also were the recipients in our uh, little ops center there of two amazing packages of some Tim Tam cookies. Um, we did consume 864 bottles of water in the space, so that's pretty good. Uh, of that coffee, we had 15 gallons, so that's a lot of caffeine, man. It's a lot of caffeine. Um, as a part of our workshops, people bring in tools. They bring in different whether it's working on off of the RFID readers or the programmers, they'll bring those in as part of our workshops. This year we had a blow up house, which was kind of interesting, and that supported a physical security um, hacking challenge as a part of one of the workshops there. We also had a challenge at the hotel with the network. We were leveraging the hotel network, and it was super great of them to provide that for us. But we found some DHCP leases that lasted a little bit too long, they weren't releasing things, so they created fake rooms for us so we could get people on the guest network and have the enhanced capabilities of what that was able to be able to, be able to handle. So really want to, once again, just seriously, those guys are awesome over there. We need to use them. In the meantime, workshops call goes out every year. If you have a topic you want to teach on, please submit next year. Same time, just as call for papers goes out, please submit. We go through a standard vetting process. This, this year we were able to support the villages because they changed the environment here. So we were able to support some of the village workshops as well. So if you have a topic you're really passionate about and you want to go ahead and instruct a group of people, please submit and we'd love to get you on stage. Thank you. Oh wait, I have this pretty picture that you provided. Look at that pretty picture. This is what workshops look like. That's not the leaking ceiling, though. No, that's the bouncy house. Though. And that's the bouncy house. They're all in the bouncy house. Yeah. They look pretty happy about that. Um, so there is a slide that we forgot to include, and I'm really embarrassed about it. Um, but back on the re rewind ourselves to early in the evening, um, building the community and engagement, we launched something new this year. DEF CON Next Gen, DC Next Gen, which is the evolution uh, and the improvement of DEF CON Kids. And I'm not sure if Bia is here. We were messaging, but I don't know if she could make it here fast enough. Oh, here we go. Yes. Okay, so give us some good words about DEF CON Next Gen. Hello, DEF CON. Uh, 
For those of you who don't know me, I am Heave. My daughter is BSI Lab. She started out, woo, she started out in Roots Asylum uh, when she was 11. And uh, when Roots died, she pretty much harassed Nikita and Jeff nonstop to get another kid's track going. So they were gracious enough last year to make her the youngest goon at 16, and she uh, kind of monitored the DEF CON kids. And this year, she set up DC Next Gen all by herself with a little logistical help from myself and some goons, and I have some notes I'm going to read. Here we go. Um, and uh, she set it up so well that when she got sick on Thursday, the entire DC Next Gen ran all by itself without any intervention from herself. So I think that says a lot for her. So um, last year we had about 50 kids. This year we had 150. And uh, heads up, Jeff and Nikita, um, we, uh, our goons fielded the questions about DC Next Gen and the number of parents who are bringing their kids next year is staggering. So um, the badge, the kids had a badge which was built by Braden Lane. It was really cool, had all kinds of stuff in it. Programmable in CircuitPython. Um, we had soldering kits, Blenster, who everybody knows and loves. He threw down and made a DC Next Gen soldering badge after he saw the amazing Raider Raccoon logo that Mar made. Um, and then Hacker Boxes also provided us some more soldering kits for the kids. Uh, we had a number of classes, of course, a circuit Python class built around the badge, secure coding, uh, zero trust networking with Cloudflare, along with a number of classes and uh, panel discussions and talks. Uh, one thing we did this year compared to like Roots Asylum, instead of trapping the kids in a room, we worked with the villages around the whole conference and encouraged the kids to go out and explore the conference and find what they really enjoyed and what dri drove them. Um, we had our goons, I'd like to thank uh, Braden Lane, um, Heidi, uh, along with our volunteers. Um, and I'd also like to thank a special shout out to both the Knock and the Packard Capture Village. We had some problems with our laptops and those guys put together everything we needed to throw together an ad hoc network. It was amazing. Um, and of course, Kevin, Chef, Jeff, uh, Neil, and uh, Nikita for supporting us on the back end with DC Next Gen. So bring your kids to DEF CON. Thank you. So for many of you, uh, DEF CON is over shortly, but there is another two days of training. This is something we started a few years ago, so for many of us, well, for some of us, I should say, uh, Monday and Tuesday is uh, more uh, training over at the, what are we at, Sahara? Yes. Yeah, Sahara. Um, and when we started it, we tried to do something a little different with the community. We're splitting the revenue 50-50 with the trainers because we think that's fair. And, uh, and so we have a pretty diverse set of training. That's pretty cool. Okay, next up, arts and entertainment. Chris A.M. We have, oh, here we go. From my left, stage right, Chris A.M. and crew. We should really have some deep drum and bass playing right now. No more, no more. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Chris A.M., the Arts and Entertainment Department Head. Uh, our purview is the, the main parties that you see in the Sin and the Act stages, as well as helping out a lot of the other groups around here. Uh, the parties team, uh, a lot of the villages, a lot of the side events, uh, we try to help them out as much as possible. And I've got a really great set of goons that are working for me that just uh, really bust it every time, all day, every day. We're, uh, we're up to all hours and it's, uh, it's really fun. Super fun. And I want to thank everybody that attended our parties up in the Sin and the Act stages. Uh, did anybody get to see the, uh, the pirate band last night? Did anybody dress up? Yeah. 
And uh, what did you think of the night before that with the retro sci-fi? Did anybody dress up for that? We have some really cool homemade costumes uh, that uh, people made. Uh, so I wanted to thank a couple people before, uh, before I get off the stage here. So I want to thank uh, my entire crew. I want to thank uh, my second, Chris Klink. Uh, he, uh, he couldn't join us here on stage today, but uh, the rest of us are here. Uh, we'll talk about the folks behind me in a second. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody in QM. They uh, were gracious hosts to us. They carved out a nice little space for us right behind this wall for all of our gear. Uh, I want to thank uh, Log and his parties team. Uh, they were really, really helpful to us, getting gear back and forth, getting stuff set up, tear down on time. So uh, that really, that was really helpful. Uh, there are so many other people that we need help and assistance from to make things successful that uh, just can't list. Uh, behind me on the screen are the, the performers that, uh, that you've seen. Uh, really, really like to have them there. Uh, so everything that we did was recorded. You'll be able to see it in uh, the, the DEF CON archive pretty soon, as soon as we get it up there. Uh, I know I'm thinking of forgetting some things. Uh, what do we want to do next? Yeah, so uh, this is a transitional year for us. We're going to play a little bit of musical chairs with uh, who's in leadership positions in the arts and entertainment department. Uh, I'm going to take a step back from this and just be a normal A&E goon, where uh, Zeke's is stepping up to take over as department head uh, going forward. Sucker. Yeah. You want to say, uh, say some words, Zeke's? Hi, DEF CON. Uh, so yeah, I'm taking over this year. Uh, well taking over next year. Uh, we start our process for this mm, in about two weeks. So that, what that means is that uh, we, will, we'll, we will be uh, starting to uh, look at uh, new acts, stuff like that. Uh, eh, about January, we'll start doing a, a call for DJs and whatnot. Um, behind me, I want to thank two people especially. Uh, I've got Chonez here. Hi. He's our uh, resident audio goon and uh, video guy extraordinaire. Uh, he helped me a huge, huge, th huge thanks for all your help in uh, getting the video done uh, for the, our Twitch stream and all of our recording. Absolutely phenomenal work from him and his, uh, his uh, right-hand man. On my other side here is Shorzy. Shorzy's our new lighting guy. He did a lot of the lighting for our chill room. Uh, had an absolute blast, made that room look completely different. It was white walls when we walked in. It was co absolute color when uh, he got done with it. So big thanks to him. Uh, let's see. Uh, we did all the recordings. We did have a little bit of a problem on Friday night. We lost some uh, internet connectivity. It's DEF CON. It happens. Luckily, though, we recorded it all. It will be on media.defcon.org. Give me a couple weeks. It's, I need to decompress. <laughs> I need to decompress just a little bit. I'll get all that footage all nice and neat, all the music all nice and neat. We'll get it uploaded to you guys. It'll be great to listen to. Um, I think that's it. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, look out for the call for music for next year's DEF CON starting right around uh, January 1st, uh, and we'll be opening the, uh, the call for soundtrack soon after that. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's going to be on defconmusic.org. Uh, our, our, our site uh, will have a, an announcement up there for you. Thank you, guys. See you next year. OK, so music is an appropriate entry point into parties and meetups. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that guy what, you on just stage? noticed the patch? <laughs> hey, I'm Log. I am the Parties and Meetups lead. Quick show of hands. Who all attended one of our awesome parties and meetups this weekend? Hell yeah. <clears throat> we just want to thank everyone for hosting a meetup first off. Um, absolutely can really needed in the community. Great places to go to meet up with your DC groups, with just random people that you have interests with. Also, thank you everyone for uh, hosting a party as well. Absolutely amazing time. Loved every single minute of it. You guys absolutely know how to actually throw and run a party. 
you want to talk about any yeah any exciting stories about parties no I, I just think it went to a different slide yeah but do you have any more to say uh, no, I, I do want to say some thank yous real quick. Uh, I do want to say a thank you definitely to Nikita, Jeff for helping us throw this out. KevOps and the wonderful official KevOps department. It's not an official department. Uh, thank you, Nikita, for the food truck village. I also want to thank all my goons. <clears throat> yeah. I want to thank all my goons, Secfault, Rick, Sage, Heaven, Subaru, Silicon, and Data. You guys absolutely rocked it. You guys absolutely helped everything out. With you. Without you guys, none of the parties would have any equipment. Thank you, DEF CON A&E as well. And also, thank you to the World Famous Exhibitors Department for lending us all the goons we needed whenever we were short-staffed. Huh? And next year, if you guys want to throw a party or a meetup, or if you have any feedback about the parties or meetups this year, be on the lookout for the call for parties and email parties at defcon.org. Thank you. He looks really familiar. Dark tangent. Okay. Video team. Video team? I see some of the video team. Okay, well then I'll talk about the video team. So if Darrington's not up here. Um, so there's a video team, handcrafted artisanal video creators that you might have seen wearing shirts, I hope. And uh, anyway, th this is kind of an outgrowth of reaching out into the community and finding people who've been, uh, have experience building like shorts and this is I think the third year we're doing it and what we really try to do is capture behind the scenes moments more than just a picture. Um, we wanted to really like empower a group of people sort of as internal DEF CON uh, badged representatives that would go out and capture good stories from the community. What are you doing in this village? Tell me about this cool aviation simulation. Um, and really capturing the stories that like I don't get to see <laughs> so I can watch them all and feel like I saw my own con. Um, and the idea then is to have these, uh, you want to show somebody what's the con all about, like a mini documentary of the, all the things that happened. And so um, all these have been uh, recorded and captured. They're being edited and uploaded. And we'll start releasing them as shorts on our YouTube channel. And then they'll end up on the media server. So I want to thank all of the video team uh, for doing this because you're really allowing the the preservation of some of the spirit of DEF CON that's not captured in either the music recordings or the talk recordings. So thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause. So next up will be communities. Communities. Someone represent, there we go. Right on. Hello, I'm Pedro. I'm not actually the community's lead, but I was working hand in hand with Chef, who is our first year community's lead. He's also accompanied by Seams and Fort. They uh, serviced and assisted with the facilitation and logistics for 13 communities, which is a new department we've been working on. Well, by we, I mean Nikita has been working on, you know, defining, getting it started, getting them spaces, and giving them the opportunity to grow organically to hopefully continue on with uh, DEF CON. I'm gonna end it there just for the time, for the sake of time. If you want to start a community or you think you've got a large enough affinity group, just apply like any other contest, villager event, and we'll try to make space for you. Villages, a big, big department. Come on down. You guys will notice that Pedro's back. Get he has, back. He's got a longer list of things to say this time, so I apologize now. So uh, we'd first like to start off with uh, some stats. So there's 34 total villages. 
we were counting communities underneath us because it was the on-ramp year for him and stuff too, and we, we definitely helped Chef um, with his facilitation for this year. And then also, um, this is the first year that we had the creator stages. So um, Ray is behind us as well, um, helped lead that. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Ray's Ops specifically. <laughs> may or may not be in direct competition with KevOps. Um, did just an outstanding, spectacular job. I don't want to steal his thunder, so I won't talk about it too much. Um, but definitely want to do a special thanks to all the village leads, all the volunteers within the villages. Um, you guys encompass around 660,000 square feet that is DEF CON. Unfortunately for us, it's in a 1.4 million square foot facility. That means that we have to run all over the place because it's not all consolidated in one place. So. Our, our goons definitely get a lot of steps in, but I'll let Pedro go next. So first of all, I'd like to start with a 128 page PowerPoint presentation on what went wrong. Before I go, what I would like to do is give a special thanks out to DT, Janet, Nikita and Neil and their minions who chased me around the con, uh, a null value for the hacker tracker stuff Raisin Meat for the creator stages. Bruiser, he is our official cat wrangler. Chef, Seams, and Forked for community's work. Fox, Flex, and Honey for all the administrative assists. Honestly, without that help, we would have quit. All of our village goons, all of the DEF CON departments for their assistance, all of the content creators because nobody would come to DEF CON if there wasn't content. Uh, definitely want to give a shout out to our friends and families for putting up with the last minute calls, last minute emergencies, and all the sacrifices made to get this show on the road. Finally, a special shout out. I want to give a really big shout out to Nina from Biohacking and her mom. One last thing I'd like to say is I'd like to give a shout out to Earth. He's a first time DEF CONner that showed up. He helped villages. He was running cable at packet hacking and he definitely was doing DEF CON the way it should be done. Well, first off, I want to, everyone should thank Honey and Pedro if you enjoyed the villages because there was a ton of work behind the scenes that they've been doing. So please. All right, so uh, you might have noticed there was four creator stages this year, also known as Ray's Ops. Um, <laughs> but uh, the creator stages are for villages and communities to use as talk tracks. Um, this year we had 70 hours of uh, content recorded and almost 150 speakers. So please, give, please thank the speakers when you see them. They had some great talks. And then, uh, yeah, thanks to the village goons, especially my second here meet. And uh, thank you all. I'll look, see you all next year. Appreciate it. See you all next year. And creators, I will miss our weekly calls. I will not be on them for a good while. So see you guys some point next year. <laughs> OK, so now we have merch. Hello, DEF CON. Who all waited in the merch line at some point this weekend? <laughs> yeah, it shows. Um, thank you all for your patience in dealing with us. We had quite a few people in line this year, and we were moving people through faster than ever. Uh, after last year, I was working on improving stuff on our back end, so our changes weren't as uh, visible, po probably, as the new ordering system we introduced last year. But we were able to speed up a number of things. We had a 13% faster order velocity year over year uh, from last year, which kind of belays how much merchandise we were moving out because we were actually moving out items at a faster rate too. Items were 18% faster than last year, which I think is speaking to the hard work that our friends at the Hacker Tracker did to get the wish list and the app and the items available to you all to look at so people can pool orders and less people have to stand in line. Um, this year we had a new record for the largest order at 49 orders. It was actually a three, or 49 items. It was actually a three-way tie. Uh, the first shirt that sold, shirts sold, the size that sold out was at 11 o'clock almost on Thursday. 
Uh, the first item sold out. What, what size was it? Uh, uh, women's small. Uh -huh. um, the first full item sol sold out was at Thursday at uh, 749. So we actually had stuff in stock for longer than we had last year, uh, thanks to uh, the great ordering that was done uh, by Amar and the folks uh, at DEF CON headquarters. What was, um, it? what was it? What sold out? The water bottle. Oh. <laughs> Um, highest number of goon steps was 37,677. Uh, my blisters will show that uh, if anybody needs to see them later. Um, and we had two goons who went to the ER but still showed up uh, for their shifts the next day, uh, unrelated to anything that happened here. <laughs> I'd just like to thank uh, everybody from DEF CON headquarters, DT, Janet, uh, Nikita, Mar, for making sure that things get to us, uh, get ordered and everything for us, um, QM for getting this stuff to us, Hacker Tracker folks for making the uh, electronic ordering work, and everybody who is patient uh, waiting in line. Thank you very much. I, I think it goes without saying that um, we'll continue to improve the, the speed, and now that we're in the new space and we kind of understand how it works, we're going to try to get really creative for other ways to accelerate the merch experience. So demo labs, not a workshop, not a talk, it's a demo lab. Thanks everybody, I'm Heisenberg, uh, they've been the lead of demo labs for a while. I know exactly where I am, but I'm not quite sure of my momentum. <laughs> the physics joke in DEF CON. Good. Okay. It has been a privilege to lead Demo Labs for about the last seven years. I'm joined up here on stage with my seconds for this year, Verbal and Harold. How many of you all went to Demo Lab, at least one Demo Lab this year? Fantastic. I see a decent show of hands. Very good. For those of you who don't know what Demo Labs is, we put out a call for papers every year, just like uh, call for demo labs, just like the call for papers, like all the other calls. And this year we got around 100 calls, or 100 uh, proposals, and we down select. This year we down selected down to 36 demo labs. And the whole purpose of demo labs is to give you, the community, the opportunity to engage with the creator of that particular project. Maybe it's a framework. Maybe it's a tool, maybe it's some kind of a technique, maybe it's something that's still kind of an idea and it's getting worked on and it's sort of in process, but we really want to give you the opportunity to interact. The whole purpose of Demo Labs is to foster this collaboration. It's deliberately a small space. We ask the presenters to rotate every 30 minutes or so, so that that way, even though uh, even though it's a fairly small space, and even though we had a few lines, everybody got a chance to get in and interact with the presenter and, uh, and have an opportunity to collaborate. So I'd like to also give a shout out to the Demo Lab crew. We have a crew this year. Uh, so if you see us in the white lab coats, those are the Demo Lab goons, and so thanks to all of them for taking care of that. And I, you know, I, I kind of reflecting back, it's been really a privilege to, there's two things that I kind of think of as I, as I reflect back on it. One of them is, I remember when Demo Labs was just a 19 inch monitor sitting on a table in the middle of a crowded hallway, right? <laughs> you know, remember that? So with, with uh, DT and, uh, and Grifter and Nikita's support, we've turned Demo Labs into, been able to evolve it into a destination event on par with all of the other really cool things that everybody's doing. And it also is a shout out to all you who submitted papers or submitted proposals for Demo Labs. So I think the, the other thing that I, I really want to mention about Demo Labs, which has been something that's cool, having been involved for seven, eight years or so, is we see a project come in and it's really kind of ill-formed. It's sort of kind of in the prototype. I'm thinking about this. And you watch the community engagement happen. The people in, and they start talking back and forth and the presenter and then the project evolves and evolves. And then a few more years it comes back and it's just this outstanding stellar project that is really launched into the community. And that is all down to you all and your interactions and your willingness to help with, uh, interact with the community. So 
that has been fantastic. The last thing I want to say is, uh, again, it has been a privilege. Uh, Verbal and Harold did an outstanding job as my second. This is my opportunity to take a step back. And so for uh, starting uh, with DEF CON, the next DEF CON, Verbal and Harold will be the leads for Demo Labs. So I want you all to... I want you all to absolutely inundate them with outstanding proposals so that they have a complete conundrum. That would just be awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, you might have noticed the giant glowing box that was the DARPA AI Cyber Challenge. I am not sure if we, ha uh, do we have someone from DARPA AI Cyber Challenge? Hmm. I know we were trying to find Perry, but if Perry couldn't make it, I will tell you that it is year one of the two sec two year uh, contest. This year was essentially the qualifiers. Next year will be the finals. I am told that next year the space you saw will continue to evolve and is going to get even more complicated and awesome. And this year the pre qualifiers happened before the event. Next year, the finals will happen at the event. So it'll be much more of a sort of spectator uh, observation next year. So you'll be able to really see what the teams are doing, um, unlike this year. So that is going to be cool. It'll be the, the final phase of the AI challenge. OK, next up, Grifter, lead of contests. Hey everybody. Um, so, hi, you specifically. Um, so we uh, we had quite a few contests this year. We actually um, we received well over a hundred contest submissions, and we took um, eighty nine contests and events, uh, official contests and events. There are actually more that took place. Like we don't have uh, you know an official designation for two idiots hitting each other in inflatable dinosaur suits, but it happens, right? I don't know who those people are, but they should get help. Um, you lost. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, this year, though, I, every year I always say, if you have an idea for a contest or an event that you want to pull off, please submit, like try to come, come up with something new. If there's something that you experienced and you feel like, you know, this, this can, I can do this better, do it then, prove it, right? But this year we had 19 new contests and events out there. So thank you so much to all the new folks who put some skin in the game and created something interesting for you. Um, I do want to point something out while I'm up here. Um, so the number one question that my goons are asked, and thank you, thank you to all the contests and events goons who are making sure that this thing goes off, is they get asked, have you seen Grifter? Or where is Grifter? Now, I'm usually running around um, talking to the contest, trying to figure out who is going to get the black badge at the end of the show, right? So interviewing them, talking to competitors, that kind of thing. And so they made me a hacker tracker. Um, it says definitely not a tracker, but then there's a tile in it. So it's definitely a tracker. And I carried this all weekend and we shared a link on our group chat. So at any point they could push a button and see where Grifter was. Um, it did go off at 3.30 in the morning on, on Saturday morning. And I was like, you creepy bastard. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was in my hotel room. Come find me. Um, all right, uh, again, huge thanks to all the creators, the, everybody who put the time in, um, and for all of the competitors. Honestly, these contests and events really create the atmosphere that is DEF CON. You may not realize that when you experience something odd in the hallway or see somebody wandering around with some weird contraption, that that's just somebody playing a game. Um, so, uh, 
again, I, I truly believe that, that the contests and events are, are part of the soul of DEF CON. Um, our motto is not one talk, not even one, right? Watch them later on YouTube, it's fine. Actually, don't, because we need you in here and not in the hallway. Um, but, but like I said, uh, please participate, create, um, and continue to put together amazing things. Uh, huge thanks to DT, of course, for throwing this party. Um, to Janet, to Neil, Darrington, and all the DEF CON HQ, um, but especially to Nikita, who, yes, give her a round of applause. <laughs> who, um, who shares many, many phone calls with me and probably thousands of text messages throughout a year. Um, the voicemail I got on Friday morning, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say it. She left me a voicemail and she said, Grifter, my brother in Christ, if you do not answer this phone or call me back in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> a lot. And I got back in five minutes. I'm like, am I in the time? She's like, mm-hmm, so close. <laughs> so um, yes, thank you, Nikita, so much for your support, not only here, but um, as a friend and in my personal life as well. Um, thank you to all of you for also being my friends, and uh, I appreciate it. If you have an idea for a contest, the call goes out in January. We'll see you then. All right. Actually... So, is, is Jeff back? You're back. Do you want to talk about the... Yeah, okay, Mar. Come on up, Mar. So, what I've got around my neck here, if you want to take a picture, this is the uh, Uber badge this year. And um, Mar is going to tell you a little bit about its construction and what makes it special. All right. So I wanted to capture the glitz and glam of uh, Las Vegas, uh, so I collaborated with my sister, uh, Amy Valentine, um, and she spent hours uh, and hours uh, hand placing all of these little glass jewels. In addition to the glass jewels, there is also uh, Swarovski um, crystals, glass crystals, and there's uh, uranium glass, which is a nod to um, Las Vegas's atomic history and uh, a previous black badge that inspired me um, by Lost, um, if y'all remember that one. Um, the so, veins are uh, gold leaf, which is sort of an expression of the natural history of the place that we're in. Um, yeah, so the uranium glass is a little green eyeball right there, and if, yeah, we checked it out in the bathroom earlier with the UV light, it was really cool. <laughs> there you go. So. So each, uh, each one, as you heard, is handcrafted. And when you earn, you don't win a gold badge. You earn a gold badge. Um, or, yeah, I'm sorry, gold. Look, look at me. I'm just like, oh, that's awesome. Gold badges are different. Um, an Uber badge, a black badge. And it allows you to enter DEF CON for life, which is like a pretty big commitment. And we... We give them out um, every year to contests that um, we think have reached a certain threshold. And the only contest that gets it for sure every year is Capture the Flag. But beyond that, it's a mystery. Who will be a black badge event? And to answer that mystery, I welcome back up to the stage, Grifter. I'm going to do it. She, yeah, oh, I'm doing it. Yep, here it is. So anyway, here's the actual text message, which I censored a little, or the actual voicemail. Grifter, my brother in Christ, if you do not fucking call me back in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to find somebody to shit in your hotel room every day for the next week. Okay, love you. Bye. That's my girl. 
you know, and she would actually, she has that kind of authority. Um, all right, so um, first off, um, we'll start with a long time uh, black badge earning contest. They, a few years ago, um, I had a, a conversation with Riverside about upping the ante with, with Capture the Packet. I felt like you know, it was getting to a place where you know, it needed a little a notch up, it had to get harder, and he, he really, really took that to the next level to the point that this year I said, hey man, relax. Um, but incredible challenges and incredible time. I'll have him come up here and tell you about that. Capture the packet. I'll do my best with my voice. I, I, this, uh, this new venue has been really hard with all the, the audio. So um, I'm Riverside. Um, I just want to thank everybody that made this one possible. It was really challenging. The PHV team, Was DJ Co, and especially all of the DEF CON staff here and the attendees to made it happen. So thank you all. I just want to give you a hand. It was hard. Um, we, uh, we also changed the format of our prelims and our mains. So normally we would have a time and go one, two, three, go. And then everybody's going. And our prelims, we just left it open. You sit down and you get a certain amount of time from the time you start to go. So we were able to get a ton of teams in and uh, it was pretty amazing. And uh, we had so much fresh blood and we had some people, the, the team here, that, uh, that has been competing now 13 years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to kind of give them a, uh, just a couple seconds to also touch on, from a competitor standpoint, the differences that Grifter just touched on. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, basically, we're here because of this community and what we've learned from all of you over the years. But uh, uh, what they've done in the Capture Packet Village and with the contest, it's gotten tougher. We've played 13 years now. Uh, great fun. It's gotten tougher every single year. They keep challenging us. The gameplay gets better, the system gets better, the challenges get harder and force us to learn more every single year. So we always go away scratching our heads, uh, trying to learn more and come back the next year better. But uh, it's all because of their hard work and it's just been a blast to play all these years and just really appreciate everything y'all do for us. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think that the things that I wanna go over is in third place, was uh, Vim Waffles with 320 points, second place Nightsec with 720, and then the first place the Chat GPT team with uh, 1,220 points. And so, give them a hand. Good job. Yeah, for, for that. Thank you guys. Right. Thanks everyone. Have a good day, everyone. All right, this, uh, this next contest is only in its second year, but the creator, um, AJ, had put in uh, one of our own goons, AJ702. Where you at? Where you at? There she is. Um, put in a ridiculous amount of work on this. So last year, um, I felt like it had it had sense of the mystery challenge, um, and then this year it it really felt like that. Um, it was the kind of contest that brought all aspects of what it means to be a hacker together: puzzles, crypto, phone freaking, hacking. Um, all of it, and I'll let them come up here and talk about it, but proud of you, girl. Hello, I am AJ, and this, uh, these, we're the creators of the Cube. Um, Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike, closer? Okay, so the inspiration for the Cube actually came from my first year at DEF CON, where I engaged with a goon uh, named Romer, and he impressed upon me the importance of, no matter if it's your first year or your 20th year, you need to engage and bring something to the community that, it, that is missing. So a couple years ago, I was watching a movie and it gave me an idea to make kind of like a puzzle box for hackers. So we have physical elements and also digital elements. 
Um, and Romer's not here with us anymore, but I would like to say thank you to him because he's the only reason we're standing on the stage. And a special thanks to Nikita for actually seeing our vision and, and accepting. Thank you so much, Nikita. Okay, now go ahead. You're next. Hello. So there was an incredible amount of work that went into competing. So it came down to the wire. Uh, in second place, we had the teams, the Misfits. It was actually tied um, with 53% of the flags pulled, so 53% completion. Um, so we had to come down to time, which was a two minute difference within the past, uh, within the last two hours. So very, very close. Um, yeah. Thank you everyone for who uh, competed. Thank you, Grifter Nikita. Um, but we had our winners, which were the Mega Doomers. Um, fantastic. There you go, you go ahead. Yeah, they did a lot of work, a lot of lock picking, a lot of crypto, a lot of web stuff, uh, a lot of work went into it, which was phenomenal to see. So thank you. Yeah, uh, definitely come join the cube next year. It's amazing. Are there stairs up here? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Jump into the water. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next contest uh, made me excited when they submitted. I was really hoping that, that they would bring it and they brought it. Um, FreakMe had uh, multiple pay phones out on, the, on their tables, I don't know if you saw this, and had all of these different freaking challenges which, which I think brought back, um, if you've ever competed in something like, like the, um, the Telefreak challenge, the Tele challenge, then, then you know like that part of our culture, you can see it on your lanyard, on, around the space. Like, Back in the day, computers for the for the whippersnappers in here, your computer used to scream into a telephone in order to talk to other computers. They just screamed at each other. Um, and and it cost a lot of money to do that. And so sometimes we had to figure out how we could, one, talk to each other very far away. You know, I mean, I'll just say it, like uh, um, the DEF CON voice bridge, I used to red box into that constantly. That's how I could call Utah from New York, right? So um, seeing that freak culture here and seeing it celebrated and seeing them bring that to new people, um, it just, it warms my heart and they brought it. The, the challenges they had were impressive. I'll let them tell you about it. Awesome, thank you. All right, so freak me. Um, yeah, basically, we wanted to start by saying how honored and blessed we are to be up here on stage with the people we've looked up to for so, so many years. Uh, huge shout out to all the goons. The production you guys put on is amazing. You guys are the reason all this works so well. So thank you all. Uh, Freakme.com. So basically, we made a CTF that was hosted on the publicly switched telephone network, 212-203-4977. Uh, uh, give it a call anytime. We're going to leave it up after the cons so you guys continue hammering away at it. We basically stuffed about 75 flags inside of a PBX, and we are here today to honor the psychoholics who smashed every single flag in our entire challenge. So, Thank you all. Look forward to seeing you guys next year. Never gets old. Oh, the Psychoholics won another contest. Oh, that's 40, 47 black badges for those guys. I think you have more black badges than people on your crew, right? Is that, is that a fact? Is, that, is it a fact? No. But they're saying no. Oh, damn it. So they'll be back. Um, I mean, they are talented. It's, not, it's unreal. It's unreal. Um, so uh, the next one uh, coming up on stage is... Uh, is the social engineering community CTF. Uh, how many people made it out or stood in the line and enjoyed the community aspect of standing in line for the social engineering village? 
No? All right, great, great, great. Awesome. That, um, that line was down the hall, wrapped around, came all the way around the other side. It was something else. Uh, they put a lot of effort into it, and they do a really, really good job of not only presenting you know, their subject matter, but of entertaining the audience as well. Their, um, their staff are, are charming and good looking, especially you, buddy. Um, and then, like I said, they add aspects to it that are entertaining. So not only you're learning, but everybody is in there laughing. So here they are, the social engineering community. Oh, hello, DEF CON, I'm back. And I'm joined with Snow, it's me, JC. Hi, I'm Snow. <laughs> and we bring you the social engineering community. So this is a, a huge labor of love. It's a lot of work, and I apologize about the lines, but that's just part of it. We're going to try and bring some line games in next year. So I'm going to let Snow talk about the, uh, the competition, our social engineering community vishing competition. All right. So for those of you who are not familiar about the competition, it's not just show up here and do cool shit. We pre-select 14 teams and they spend months doing OSINT and building plans. So much work goes into this before they even step foot into DEF CON. Then once they get here, they spend 22 minutes in our soundproof booth in front of you all placing live vishing calls, which is terrifying. And as Grifter said, we like to up the ante every year. Each year we get a little bit uh, better at what we're doing and then we also push the limits. This year we had a heart rate sensor for the uh, competitors to wear. That was fun to watch going from 80 to one, I think the max was uh, 65? 165 I saw. I felt like we needed paramedics on standby. It was a little nerve wracking. But we also did something, it wasn't an official competition, but we decided to push the limits again and Saturday morning following our same structure, we had a completely AI team. That was it. They weren't typing prompts. It was a full AI bot talking to someone. And that was incredible. So now we're looking at how do we incorporate the AI piece into our competition for next year. So a lot of research, a lot of thinking, a lot of work for us next year. But without further ado, our second place team was Hall and OSINT. And I'm joined on stage with our first place team. I like that name. A girl has a team, and that team is comprised of Andy, James, and unfortunately their third teammate had to uh, uh, not be present due to a, an emergency, but Jace. So Andy, James, and Jace, they're our first place team. Awesome, thank you everyone to help support us, attendees, our goons, Nikita, Grifter, DT, thank you so much. Oh, thanks. Presents. Thanks, sir. Bribes. Um, so, uh, this next crew um, put on an incredible competition. I actually heard enough about it that I was like, I got to make it over there. I've got to make it over there um, from the folks who were um, participating. Uh, the Embedded Systems Village CTF put together an incredible challenge. They had, what did you say, 70 different teams that were competing um, and they all they had to be gated through different things. I'll let them get into that. I will say though, what really, um, what really warms my heart is that they handed me something they had made. It was a badge that um, at a certain, they, they stopped and handed it to me and they said, wait a minute, um, get him the instructions, he'll hurt himself. <laughs> um, so, the Embedded Village System CTF. Hey DEFCON, I'm TiVo from the Embedded Systems Village. Thank you. Uh, I first want to thank all the DEFCON organizers um, and the, the village goons, John and uh, Pedro. Uh, this year was, was a lot of work and I really appreciate everything that you were able to help us with and it, it was a, a great event. Uh, I want to thank the team behind me that helped put on uh, this challenge. It made a really incredible CTF. We had over 50 challenges. Uh, it started with some uh, embedded devices that had known vulnerabilities and end-day vulnerabilities from LTE gateways to satellite base stations and ruggedized camera systems. Uh, this year, the, the, the challenge that we added was that when teams got to a third, certain point threshold, uh, we would give them an embedded development board with challenges baked into that. And they would take that home and they worked on them overnight and they would come back the next day and they would 
get a bunch of points in the CTF. I want to give a big props to the team BYU Pony, who made a really good push and actually got tied at one point, but ultimately lost out to our winners, Flowers by Irene. psychoholics we don't just win challenges we run them oh we get black badges and we give them away I don't know all right so um, if if you're not familiar with this contest crashing and pile um, is on the contest stage I'll, I'll let them get into all of the actual details about how the contest went but I will say that one of the things that um, <laughs> see that's what they told me I would hurt myself with and now DT is just swinging it around um, <laughs> so um, what are you saying? <laughs> I didn't say anything, man. I'm at school. We're good. So, um, the, one of the parts of their challenge, though, is that they have a, a team distraction who is meant to distract the competitors throughout uh, the entire um, contest. Well, at one point, one of the members of Team Distraction came up to me and said, hey, we need to talk about the sun because it's really, really bright over there and it's like blinding people and stuff. And I was like, you want me to fix the sun? <laughs> and I was like, aren't you on Team Distraction? Badge the sun. <laughs> all right, so, all right. Crash and compile. Hi. I can feel, uh, I can feel the love. Hey everyone. Um, so yeah, this Psychoholics team is kind of interesting. Um, so a little background on Crash Compile. It's a programming drinking game. So uh, we had 49 teams register. Uh, nine of them made the cut. And on the main stage, they had to go through a series of programming challenges. In this case, they had to actually write code to navigate a maze and discover all these programming challenges along the way. And anytime they messed up, uh, something didn't work, or we just felt like it, they had to drink. For a long time. <laughs> uh, we went through, I think it was around 145 beers for nine teams uh, in a short amount of time. Very good. Uh, the winning team, uh, Hack Oak Spaghetti, uh, not only got drunk, but they also win this magnificent uh, dice that we put together, solid steel. It's very dangerous. <laughs> don't break the laptop. Don't, don't break the laptop. Just really nilly. Um, anyway, we really enjoyed it this year. Uh, things went really well. Wanted to thank the, uh, all of the contest goons, contest and events goons. Uh, everything went off swimmingly. We even made our own sign this year, which was like arts and crafts. I really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone. I actually, uh, just to be clear, I do love the psychoholics. I, I, I play D and D with a couple of them. So, um, all right. Uh, this next crew up here, um, I always say this, this is a contest that's also near and dear to my heart because I used to run it. Um, and when I did, uh, we did a lot of bad things, but they have taken it, alleg allegedly, we did a lot of bad things. Um, they've taken it to the next level. They've actually integrated it so much into the conference now that it really is um, part of DEF CON. Um, so, and then at a certain point, there's always been strip teases, but this was the first year that a robot dog was twerking while that was going on. Um, the scavenger hunt. Allegedly. Allegedly. Like, oh, this. Did you? Fantastic. Just like that. That is some Hello. authentic track. So as mentioned, we are the DEF CON scavenger hunt. This is our 27th consecutive year here at the con. My name is Zora. This is the 10th year I've been working the scavenger hunt as a judge alongside Sconce, who it's also his 10th year. We have Evil Mofo, 
In his 12th year as a judge for the hunt, we have Balsa for his third year, and of course, Dool D, who is busy packing up all our shenanigans in his 15th year working the hunt. If you don't know who we are, we are allegedly the cause of all shenanigans at the con, and one of the best ways that you can experience a little bit of everything that DEF CON has to offer. A lot of the past teams and players have become uh, core parts of this community. So with that, um, we have had a record of 150 teams sign up to play this year. And with that, our top three teams are all first time DEF CON attendees. So we'd like to acknowledge our second and third place teams. Our third place team is Degenerates with a total of 103 points. Our second place team is Regenerate 1 with 118 points. And of course, our first place team, Bananarchy, with 143 points. Coming up, guys. Bananarchy. So with that, thank you so much. Thank you for always having us and allowing us to raise all sorts of hell. Uh, second and third place teams, come see us outside to track one, and we'll see you all next year. All right, so we really um, like contests that, that try to engage multiple aspects of the community or try to push people to get outside of their comfort zone, learn new skills, engage new attendees, and challenge them um, throughout the conference. Uh, this next contest did all of those things and, uh, and really brought some, tried to focus on bringing new attendees uh, into it and pushing them to really, really experience um, DEF CON as it was meant to be experienced. And so with that, Octopus Games. What's up, guys? Uh, who knows about Octopus Game? If you would have told me three years ago when I came up with the idea that I'd be up here speaking, giving one of our players a black badge, I would have probably laughed at you. But yeah, um, my original idea was to rip off the show Squid Game and create a battle royale and everyone would meet up and battle with kids games and they would make friends and explore the con and it was awesome and over the next two years it's grown and evolved and we have an amazing team of volunteers. Let me, Joss Mason's calling me right now. Uh, it's too late. You gotta it's answer late. it. You gotta answer it. If you, if you get called on stage you have to answer. Uh, it's too late. I fucked up. <laughs> They'll call back. Okay, so I, I did very little to help the, the people that should be up here are behind me and they're kind of shy, especially this lady, this is my wife, Nicole. She ran the game this year, so really they deserve all the credit. I did very little. So thank you, Nicole, for running the contest and all of our volunteers this year. Wade, who has one of the most famous mustaches in InfoSec. <laughs> Uh, Joss Mason, who was just trying to call me right now, and I should have answered it. Uh, Jibby, Erica, Jen, and George, thank you so much. Thank you to our sponsors, Black Girls Hack, uh, Cyber Supply Drop, Women's Society of Cyber Jutsu. It was really awesome to give our players some really good prizes this year. And uh, thank you to Grifter, Nikita, uh, DT, uh, everyone on the contest and events crew, uh, Cabes and Seco, everybody. Like, this is really awesome. And yeah, we just wanted to build a contest that's kind of the unofficial tutorial quest for the con. We want people to explore the villages, meet people, like you said, outside of your comfort zone. So yeah, thanks for having us. All right, we're not done yet. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> little, little premature. Uh, we had 120 competitors. 16 of them completed all 12 challenges with the final challenge tiebreaker being a large game of Simon Says. And the winner was Greg. That's all we know. He's not here right now. We do have his information and we'll be giving him the badge. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. Let's save this one badge. Problem solved. Oh, you got it? Okay. So you'll get it to Greg. You'll yes, get the badge. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right. Um, 
this next contest really brings it. They bring a huge team to literally build a city inside of the contest area um, to outfit it with utilities and to put on one hell of a show um, with that Red Alert ICS CTO. Right. Hi, DEFCON. Anyong Haseo from Korea. So we've been running the Red Alert ICS CTF for the past uh, three days, and we hope that our players have had a lot of fun. We've uh, run a pure ICS team CTF, right? And we had 62 teams show up this, this year, and it's been a fun weekend, I hope. Uh, for quick results on joint third position, we have three teams, Corridor Crew, Dollar Rip, and Ripperscape. Second position, NoobTube. And first position, Team Tesuji. Black Badge winners. And uh, just a quick note on the amount of work that the team has done. They came in second place last year, and they kept working. They came back this year, and they just won the CTF. And uh, thank you, DEFCON, for making us a Black Badge event for a third time, and the second time in a row right now. And uh, special gratitude to our contest leads, contest goons, uh, Sikov, Cabes, Grifter, everyone here on stage, and for the rest of my team on stage and off stage who've come in from Korea and from Singapore. And to our sponsor and partner, Athena Dynamics, as well. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, um, if you were in the contest area, you really couldn't miss this one. Um, the next folks coming to the stage are the car hacking CTF. Um, one of the things that I love about this CTF is that they continue to innovate, they continue to switch things up, and they actually convince manufacturers to allow them to add aspects of the contest into you know what they're doing with the vehicle. So, um, you know, like I said, the the contest creators that are here really make DEF CON what it is. Um, they put in a significant amount of work and they even in cases jump through what can must only be the most ridiculous legal hoops to make these things happen. So the car hacking CTF. Thank you, Grifter. I'm going to be quick because I want to relax and go get in a hot tub. Uh, I'm Justin Justin. I'm the chief of the car hacking village. Um, this has been our 10 year anniversary, so thank you DEF CON for letting us do this for 10 years. Uh, cannot believe it's been 10 years now. And, uh, some firsts this year, uh, we brought a semi truck this year. I don't know if anybody's seen, but we've been trying to do this for a few years now. We actually made it happen, so we had a class 8 semi truck here that people were able to learn and hack on. Uh, and like Grifter was saying, another first for us, we had an OEM Rivian actually put flags in their vehicle for people to hack on and try to figure out and find. So that was really big for us and amazing that an OEM actually worked with us to put flags in their vehicle. So huge shout out to Rivia, thank you. <laughs> Moving into our CTF challenge, we had about 15 challenges. We tried to keep them very uh, hard uh, and difficult. They were all around automotive networking and exploitation. We had 95 teams registered this year, so a big shout out to all the teams that played. Um, our last problem was solved about an hour before the contest closed. And to dig into some of our winners this year, I'll just start with our second place team was Canucks. So congratulations. And moving into our first place team, who actually also won a Tesla. So we actually gave away a car this year for our first place prize. It wasn't just, well, we found out about a black badge later, but um, we're not only just allowing the winners to get a black badge this year, they are also winning a Tesla. So congratulations to our first place team, Upper Score. Damn. Congratulations and thank you guys again. <laughs> thanks, Steph Right on, thank thanks. <laughs> All right, you know them and you love them. They knew, they, they were the only ones who knew they were getting a black badge before this morning, and that's because I texted Jeff um, yesterday as Hacker Jeopardy was starting. I said, hey, it's the 30th anniversary. We're doing this, right? And he just sent back, yes, with exclamation points. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
What they don't know is like Jeff and I had talked and I said, hey, one of the guys on the team for Hacker Jeopardy um, already has a black badge. And he was like, so there's just two guys don't have black badges on the 30th anniversary winning team. We should give them two black badges. So come up and get those two black badges, Hacker Jeopardy. Thirty fucking years of Hacker Jeopardy, Jeff. <laughs> Not many of you know that when we did uh, Hacker Jeopardy one, Jeff was my van of vinyl. <laughs> there are pictures. We will make sure that they are up. And Nikita has somehow tolerated our bullshit for how many years now? Grifter and DT, the support that we've had, and you guys, it's just, you've, you've made this 30 years absolutely amazing and as long as I fucking stay vertical you can't get rid of me we will return Hacker Jeopardy 30 fucking years thank you all <laughs> this year it came down at the very end we had three teams for the final and uh, everybody was could have won everybody could have won and the final category was to do some sort of bullshit, figuring out what all the OSI levels, uh, layers were in reverse alphabetical order. So one of the teams got it absolutely right, not in the form of a question. <laughs> Another team got it absolutely right, but not in reverse order. <laughs> So the only team that got it right is my other computer is your stepmom. Let's hear it for him. Thank you so much. Please thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. That's yeah, I mean, you're getting you. one too. Welcome. I'm, I'm okay. Congratulations. Make it weird for them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, and last but certainly not least, I say this every year, they need no introduction, capture the flag. Good afternoon, DEF CON. We are Nautilus Institute, third time organizers of DEF CON Capture the Flag, and I assure you there are actually more than three of us. Uh, so kicking things off, once again, we partnered with Live CTF to bring more audience enjoyable activities into our game. Live CTF is the head-to-head -head speed hacking component of DEF CON Capture the Flag, where participants must battle head-to-head -head in a tournament for points that are added to their final score. You can see the full recaps online at livectf.com or scan this QR code Pretend uh, to go right to the final match. All challenges are already open source and linked from that site as well. Our favorite moment was in one of the first rounds where last year's winning team, Maple Mallard Magistrates, were knocked right down into the spirit world lower bracket due to an unintended solution. Always watch your stir end comps versus mem comps. Congratulations to Blue Water for an undefeated run through live CTF. All right, you know, you know we've got to th uh, say thanks to a bunch of people who uh, made this possible. So uh, thanks to all the hardworking DEF CON goons in every department, Dark Tangent, Nikita, Grifter, Cabes, Seacove, Aster, the rest of the DEF CON staff, especially the Knock and Sock goons who were uh, extremely helpful with our uh, sometimes very quick needs. Uh, your work, dedication, and creativity, and ingenuity inspire us to continue to make a mountain worth climbing. This year's finals hosted teams that qualified from many contests. DEF CON CTF finals in 2023, HitCon in Taiwan, Plaid CTF in the US, OCTF in China, and our own qualifiers uh, hosted this May. Our qualifiers saw 1,700 teams submit hundreds of solutions to dozens of challenges. For finals, 12 teams flew in from dozens of countries to the largest, or 
or to the largest DEF CON CTF venue yet. We built eight attack defense challenges, one King of the Hill challenge, and our friends from Live CTF ran 22 head to head Live CTF matches. The scoreboard was busy the whole time, and first place was up for grabs up until the last hour of the game. In third place this year, we had Super Dice Code. In there we go. In second place, and the winners of the live CTF, we had Blue Water. And in first place, some of the only people in the world who have been on this stage more than I have for CTF, Maple Mallard Magistrates. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're thrilled and honored to be the DEF CON 32 CTF winners. Uh, it's a privilege uh, to represent MMM, our amazing international team with PPP from the US, Dadok from Korea, and Maple Bacon from Canada. Uh, winning three, inners, three years in a row um, really shows the dedication, uh, brain power we have, and teamwork we've got. Uh, the past few days were intense and challenging, uh, but that's what pushed us to our best. Uh, and of course, a huge thank you to the organizers and DEF CON for crafting such a dynamic and engaging competition. Uh, and to my two teammates, uh, your hard work, skill, and passion uh, are the reasons we're standing here uh, today as champions uh, once again. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we can't wait to see you all again next year. Thanks. That's it. All right. So this is where I would like to thank all of our departments that have made this conference possible. And I'd also like to point out um, none of us were ready to change locations uh, so quickly six months ago. Um, I haven't really told the story, but uh, so we had this really long standing relationship with Caesars and the, the main person that I would work with, I wouldn't talk to very often because things would be going right. And uh, almost 20 years. And uh, I get a call, I get a message and like, hey, um, hey, are you available for a call sometime? And I'm thinking, oh, I don't, I don't hear from him very often. Um, I wonder what's going on. So I ask our sales people, the, the people, Caesar sales, like, should I get ready for this call? And they're like, we don't know what the call's about. I go, okay. Oh, 20 years. I bet he's retiring. He's got to be retiring. He's going to give me a heads up. He's retiring. and He's going to pass me off to the next guy. Okay, cool. So I get on the phone call and we're chit-chatting and I'm waiting for him to tell me that he's retiring. And then he's like, I've got some bad news. We're terminating the contract. Oh, so you're not retiring. Uh, this is going to be a problem. And uh, yeah, that was quite the moment. And that's when it just all happened all at once. And, um, and so I said, what the fuck do I do now? And he said, oh, remember Janice uh, used to work for us? Yeah, she's over at the LVCC now. We've got a date lined up for you. They're holding the space. Give them a call. Super awesome. And so it worked out. And here we are. Which meant that everybody on this list, all the teams, departments, contests, creators, villages, we all had to pivot at warp speed to make this conference happen. Which, I'll be honest, at many times did not quite look possible. But I think what's happened is I think we've all just gone through this giant trial by fire experience. Right? It was really kind of a little traumatic, but we pulled it off. And I think because the event was so positive and the space so good, we had a great experience. Let, who likes this space? It, it was, it was uh, not something we would have done on our own. We wouldn't have just decided to make this kind of a big change. But since we were forced to make the change, you know, we made the best of it. 
So I just want to thank um, all the departments and all the goons that made it possible. Let's give you guys a round of applause. Thank you. And I'd like to acknowledge and recognize the goons that are retiring. G Mark, Noise, Ira, Estebang, Gattaca, Dakuna, the Saint, Morphix, Brick, or Bick, Wham, Casper, and all the current uh, gold badge holders and all, so a gold badge holder is sort of like an Uber badge. After 10 years of service, um, if you decide to retire, you get attendance for life for the service. And then noons, which are the new goons coming in. So thank you everyone, noons. So this is us, so I'll skip by that. Thank you, thank me, thank you. Okay. Um, also, we try to keep a lot of the content online uh, year round. Um, we have a bunch of social stuff that we try to do. Uh, Darrington uh, does a movie night on our Discord. We have our DEF CON uh, social server. We've got stuff on YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff. There's ways to participate with the community year round or even if you don't get to attend uh, in person. So um, I have, I think I'm almost out of slides, but I do have something here, dark chocolate story. Okay, so I have to tell you the dark chocolate story. Um, in the badge, at some point, you can elusively sometimes come across the Dark Tangent character. I guess I'm pretty elusive and I run away from you a lot. Um, but apparently, and no one told me, <clears throat> Mar, that, that if you get near me and the right stars align and there's some proximity something, it says that the Dark Tangent will give you dark chocolate. <laughs> or I, the dark chocolate character arrives. I don't know what it is. So the first time it happens to me, I'm walking down the hall and someone runs up to me and says, dark chocolate. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what's going on? I had no idea, I was totally bewildered. The second time it happens though, it's so last night, it looks like a, maybe a husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, and they are like, we've got him, we found him, dark chocolate. And they come up to me and they're, dark chocolate. What do we? Like, if I'm near you, I get a, and I just so happen to have a chocolate bar in my pocket. <laughs> and so, there they are. There they are, right there. <laughs> there they are. And I'm thinking to myself, holy shit, I've got chocolate in my pocket. And so I'm, just, they're like, so dark chocolate thing. And I just unzip my pocket. I hand them the chocolate bar and I turn around and walk away. And they're like, holy fuck! <laughs> like, that worked! <laughs> it was amazing and here you are. I just, I knew that it was probably a story you're gonna tell forever because it was like, it perfect, every, everything aligned, so that was awesome. And there they, I'm glad I told this, I'm glad I wrote that down, awesome. Okay, so for next year, we expect to see you back August 7th to 10th. I think, um, I think the space is amazing and it gives us a, uh, so some of the comments I heard was my shoulders aren't bruised from being cr bumped into. Other people said that it felt like a con from 10 years ago, even though there might be a lot of people here, they didn't feel so much like FOMO and pressure and it was much more chill and relaxed. We, is that a pretty honest estimation you think? Yeah, pretty cool. I know there's always going to be growing pains, but it, so as organizers, we're really close to the problem and sometimes you don't see the big picture. And so for me, I was really obsessing over all the problems and all I was reading online was people saying, amazing, everybody under one roof, this will be great. We haven't done this since DEF CON 20, uh, yeah, 27. <clears throat> And so that's when, I, that's when I realized like the power of sort of community all under one roof was going to just like wash over all these problems. And that was really, I mean, that was one of the reasons why we really put the energy in to make this happen was because we thought the benefits of, of all under one roof was going to be amazing. And it really, holy, who, what, who's that by the door there? Hey there. 
Hey, giant chickens. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. See you next year at the LVCC West Hall. More content will be online, and you are now authorized to disengage. Woo!